Hello, boys and girls. I'm Perlo Esden, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I had a buddy of mine who's a big Rangers fan come out and say, oh, because Kako was scratched at the end of uh, the last game of the against Tampa Bay. There was a big hullabaloo that he would get traded. Um my first instinct on what I was like, they just played 20 games in 40 nights. Kako's 21 years old. They just wanted fresh legs. I mean, Kako's still a young guy. That was my first instinct. It probably is. It's probably what it is. No doubt about that. But um, so I'm going to look at an article from the New York Post, actually, um, that talks about specifically about the benching. But more about some other reasons why Kako could very well be traded. Uh, my first instinct, it wouldn't happen. I mean, why are you going to trade a 21-year-old? And we're going to look at Kako as well. Six foot two, 200 pound guy that got 18 points in 41 games. I say, well, you know, a lot of people will say, that's not that many points. It, it is a lot of points. For, for a guy who's as young as he is, he's doing okay. The progression isn't that bad. However, that might not be the issue. And I would imagine, yes, for such a high draft pick, they were expecting even more than what he has given. But it's not bad. And there's a lot of teams out there that would still see a plenty of upside on him. So there would be a lot of teams interested in a, in, in a deal of some kind or what have you. So we're going to look at the implications, not, uh, not necessarily of, of him not playing the last game. Honestly, he's a young guy. You go through t a young guy playing 20 games and 40 nights in the playoffs, it's no shame that your body's burnt out and the coach can tell and you need new legs. It's, it's no shame at all. So I'm not going to really put much stock on that, but there is a lot of other things I'm going to put stock in, by the way. Pearl of Wisdom show hasn't been on as of late. When I get back on, it'll be on, but it's right here at the Pearl of Wisdom channel. Check it out. Hit the subscribe button. Be part of the frolic because I do this kind of stuff all the time. We just traded uh, JT Miller. We traded Debrinkat. We did Jude New Jersey's second overall pick video. Check those out too. All right. Let's take a look at this article, and then we're going to look at five teams that could end up getting Kako this summer. And it's Larry Brooks, well-known writer, been writing for a long time. Uh, it's in the Chicago, it's in the Post. So... Um, Kako scratch clouds this Rangers future. I don't like necessarily agree with that. They, they got to do some writing to kind of create some intrigue. I'm not sure about it. That specific thing having much to do with his future. He goes into a coaching Emmy deal that happened last year where he was offer sheeted and Montreal decided to take the picks. And so it led us to something, a little more reason why he may be heading out. And the leverage is based on the simple mathematical truth that the Rangers would be helpless if Kako receives an offer sheet in the range of 4.2 to 6.3 million. That would bring in nothing more than the compensate of a first and a third rounder. With contracts of uh, both Lafreniere and K. Andre Miller, in another year, that would likely amount to upwards of a combined $10 million. So that is the reason why you might have to look at possibly allow letting Kako go here. That combined with the fact that he hasn't really hit like the superstar that we were, a lot of people were hoping that he was. But when he was drafted, he was never really supposed to be that. He was like a Palat. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you can grab a guy in the fifth, sixth pick and he's like Palat, that's what you're looking for there. But it just may be that the numbers don't add up. And we'll look at the numbers in a second here. But 
Lafreniere, I mentioned it in a video, I said that possibly they might even have to trade Lafreniere because, and we'll look at that in a second as to why that may be. Um, however, I since after these playoffs, I doubt that would ever happen. So it says the ramifications of Saturday scratching are unknown. I don't think it has anything to do with it. But if Kako gets to July 13th without an extension, that would likely be a two-year deal around $2 million and $2.5 million per. See, that's about what the Rangers can afford. That's a bridge deal. That's probably what the offer is going to be. But if you're Kako, and you're, well, at least if you're Kako's agent, you're like, why would you sign that deal? If you don't sign it and you get past July 13th, somebody can make them an offer sheet they can't afford to do anything about. So they'd either have to trade them before the offer sheet happened or somebody will do the offer sheet and they take the first and the third. And we're going to look at that. So what... That being the case, and I think it's highly unlikely he's going to sign that $2 million, $2.5 million per. If he does, everybody loved Kako because he's given up a lot of money here to uh, stay with the Rangers. But um, the, what the Rangers are hoping for is they can get enough, enough teams out there interested that they're going to offer more. Now, no matter what, in other words, they're going to give a trade over the first and the third, a trade better than the first and the third, and they're still going to sign Kako to $4.5 million for however many years or something like that, right? Like, And we'll look at that because some teams that we're going to look at, they don't have their third. That's the other thing. It's a first and a third round pick, but it has to be your own first and a third. It can't be any. It can't be another team's first or third. It has to be your own first or third. So that's going to come in handy as we go through each team. But first, let's look at the Rangers. Okay, we'll go over this quick because we already kind of talked about it. The Rangers have thirteen point thirteen million cap space this year, so they can sign them. They could even sign them. They could even, uh, if somebody offers sheets them, they could match it. But Right, they can match it and be okay this year, but what about Cop? They didn't give up a first for Cop to let him go. Apparently, he, you know he's probably going to be in the five million dollar range, five to five point five, much like Hyman got. Um, which would take out six. Do you want to keep Petrano? They could. Petrano would probably take half that money, of what of what Caco is going to take, and you could keep Petrano instead. And uh, there you go. Voila. Kako is on his way out. You got to fill out your defense. And then, like you said, you've got Lafreniere coming up. What's he going to want? I'm telling you right now, that's going to be a difficult one because Kreider is a left. And this is why I did the video on it. You have two left wingers in Kreider and Panarin. And one of those, one, one of those and most likely Kreider, is going to have to end up taking a third line spot. So you can be rest you can rest assured that Alexis Lafreniere is going to want second line money. So there you're going to have to pay him even on a bridge probably something like 4 to 5 million dollars already. And then Phil, uh, Philip Heal after the great playoffs he had if he knocks it out of the park next year you see, the money's running out really a lot here. And it's possible that Kako ends up being the odd man out this year because of the fact that people can offer sheet him. And let's look at Kako, okay? I get, I hear a lot of, everybody's like, oh, let go of Kako. We don't need Kako. They don't like Kako. Six foot three, 200 pounds. Six foot three, 200 pound winger. Had 18 points in 43 games as a 21-year-old. Yeah, he, he didn't really increase his point production all that much over the time so far. But a, a lot of players, it takes them a while to do that. He's only 21 years old, man. He's big. He's solid. He's got plenty of upside. There's nothing to worry about about this kid. Not to mention, 
He plays fantastic defensively already at 21 years old. There's going to be a long lineup of teams that are interested in Kako. So they can try to get that bridge if they want at 2 to 2.5. He, I'm not – let's put it this way. If, if, if Kako is my son, I'm telling him, no way you sign him that. You love New York that much that you're going to throw away millions and millions and millions of dollars? I wouldn't. I know that. Okay. Let's look at uh, some of the teams that would be offering here. Starting off at the Seattle Kraken. Now here, Seattle Kraken, they've got the fourth overall this year in the draft. And that's a pretty decent player already right there. And the third. But the reason why I put the Seattle crack in here is they don't have to worry. They got $22.5 million, over $22 million in projected cap space. They got a lot of cap space. To me, it all depends on how fast they want to rebuild here. Getting, if you were to give up your first and third this year, Nemich looks like a really good, or Juracek, or, you know, some of the guys that are going to be in that fourth spot. They look like really good prospects. Now, if you're... Scouts are saying that Juracek or Nemec, I mean, that's like getting another Slavin. Probably drop this. All right. I, I, I don't think they're quite that good. Probably drop this. Anyways, but more than likely from what I'm hearing, those, are, those players are a couple years away. Now we look at their depth chart. They just picked up Veneers, who already is playing very well for the nine points in 10 games in the 10 games he played. It's only 10 games. It's, uh, you know, he's a big center. Hard to say how he's going to do over an 82-game schedule. I mean, it's a lot to learn how to do this grind. But if you put Kako in there with Veneers at 21 years old and you give up that first and the third, by the way, first of all, the Rangers probably wouldn't mind this so much. They can get a really solid prospect that's going to be ready in a couple of years. Uh, probably, you know, they wouldn't fight too much on this one if, if, that, if that's what were to happen. And Seattle's got their first and third this year. So you put Kako in there along with Beniers and Schwartz, and you're not having to wait a couple of years all of a sudden. So if ownership is like, I don't really want to rebuild for the next five or six years, that's going to cost me a lot of money, and you want to do a quicker type of rebuild, I'd say getting Kako would be a really good way of doing that. Uh, like I said, he's got plenty of upside. Reminds me of a Palat. Who wouldn't want Palat on the right side? Against a two, with a two-way guy like Beneers, as good as he is already. you know. And then they still got a great pick coming up next year. They got like four second-round picks this year. So they've still got lots of picks to pick up players. I personally would strongly consider this, depending on what my scouts are saying in comparison with the player I could pick in that spot. I would definitely strongly consider it. What do you think, Seattle fans? Sub yourself up to my YouTube channel and uh, give me a comment in the comment section. If you go down to all my other videos, anytime anybody comments, I always comment back. Talk back and forth. I don't know everything about everything. Eh? I learn most of my stuff by talking in the Facebook chats and stuff like that talking to fans. That's what I like. It's fun. So talk to me in there. If I disagree with you, though, it's okay. We're, we're big here. We're big. You can disagree with me. You can call me stupid, idiot, all of those sort of things like that. I, I've been called worse by people a lot closer to me. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a big boy. I'll handle it. All right. Next, Detroit Red Wings. Okay, Detroit Red Wings, the reason why I put them in here is I think they want to speed up this. It's been a while now for this rebuild, what, five years, getting there, four or five years. Uh, you know, they they lost out in the second half quite a bit. Phil Silly gets fired. I heard a lot of Detroit fans saying that they were happy about that. I think this is just a young team. Like I said, you're learning to take on the grind of the NHL. A lot of young players here, and it takes a while to learn how to do that. To get your body and mentally and physic and be physically ready for an 82 game schedule, but they have their first and they have their third, and I've been hearing uh, discussions out there. Where, where's Detroit's? That they're yeah, they got the eighth overall. 
I've been hearing that they're not really too afraid this year to drop that uh, eighth overall pick on on the right on the right player. Now they've got a cap space for days. You know that that that'll eventually be a problem because they got like Tyler Bertuzzi they got to sign Larkin they got to sign all of those sort of things like that, no doubt about it. And I have a feeling that most Detroit fans would say that we need to worry about our defense, not our offense. But I think their defense down the road is going to be actually really good. Edvinson, Volander. Tolmistu, Sabrango, uh, like I said, and uh, they already have Lynch, Gustav Lindstrom already. They got a lot of left defensemen. In fact, I mean, they could afford to lose a left defenseman or two in this deal if they didn't want to give up their first. And just, you know, they say, well, okay, we'll give you an offer sheet, but we'll work out a deal instead. You could possibly do that, but. If you, if the guy, if uh, Kako's willing to sign, wait, did oh, did they have? Yeah, they had their first and third too, so they don't have to worry about it. Um, if Kako's Zadino just hasn't really hit it out of the park. It's a little worrisome. So you bring Kako in, and if Zadino doesn't make it, you move him away, and he gets to play with Pia Suter and Verano right now. That's a solid second line. I still think they need help with the second line center there. Just me. I'm not a big Pia Suter for the second line center position, but this is a building team. And uh, they could get bigger, couldn't they? They could get tougher. Why not? Kako's big, solid dude. He doesn't play super, super, like, like punishing type hockey, but he, he's big. He can take, he can handle himself. All right. I don't see him backing down from people or anything like that. And like, I get, think Palat in Tampa Bay. That's what he reminds me of. What's wrong with that? Especially when they get a first line center on top of it, speed up this rebuild a ton. They take the number, the guy at number eight, He's probably not going to be ready for a couple of years. I don't think Detroit's in a position where they are worried about getting players that aren't going to be ready for a couple of years. They got a lot of young guys that are going to be ready to get in this roster soon. Um, as it is, uh, Jonathan Berg Bergeron, I think, should be ready here probably right away. Theodore Niederbach, I've heard nothing but great things about him. And uh, they might want to even add free agents in, into this group here soon. So, I like it for Detroit. I, I I think San Jose would give it a good, give it a give it especially for a first and a third, where you don't really need that first. It's not the deepest draft in the world this year. So, then again, if you really love that guy and you think he's going to be as good and not better than Kako, you probably don't even bother with this. But all right, next Ottawa. Ottawa has been very vocal about their seventh overall being available. They have their first and third round picks if they want to. Offer sheet. The the reason why I'm a little bit apprehensive about Ottawa is that they're just not a team that seems to have the philosophy to offer sheet, right? Because um, they don't want to be offer sheeted back. They're a small market team. They don't have the the greatest uh, depth. Or sorry, they don't have. They don't go to the cap. Is what I'm trying to say. They 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 don't have a lot of money to throw around. It's a very small market team. And I don't know if they're really too big on pissing off other GMs and then, you know, losing their guys the same way. But all that being said is an I think. I could be totally wrong about that. And I do know that they that, that uh, they have come out and said in Ottawa that Dorian has said, almost forgot his name, that the, it's, that the seventh overall is up to, up for grabs. If they, they want to improve their team right now, they want to get better right now, they think they're strong. Um, I think it might be a little bit premature, but in this market, I don't think they have the time like most teams, like a team like Detroit would have. So I kind of get it. Um, they certainly have cap space. How much cap space, we don't totally know. Because uh, we don't know if they're willing to 
go to the absolute cap or not. But if they gave up the first and third for a guy like Kako, they get a big solid, they like big solid two-way guys. And Kako is that in spades. He's really good defensively. Solid two-way player. They have Connor Brown, who's going to be a free agent next year. He can come down, play down lower. Uh, you could put him to the left side because he can play left and with Stutzla and Kako. And you got somebody to play with Stutzla. Stutzla really needs a high school guy to play with him. Um, he can keep up with them. He plays two ways. I mean, as this, as Kako progresses, I think that would be a great combination. And it gives them, all they got to do is make an offer in the 4.3, 4.4, whatever it is, that's going to be too much for the Rangers, it appears. And they got him for a first and a third this year that they were planning to give up anyways. I would do it. I would do it, but I really like Kako. Tell me in the comment section, Ottawa fans, if you like Kako. I know he... He hasn't progressed like a lot of people think he does. He, he gets drafted as high as he does. And, you know, people are just not happy unless they knock it out of the park right away. Usually. They view them as a bust. I don't think he's a bust. I think he's still a solid player. I never thought he was going to be a superstar. I thought he was going to be like a Palat. Tell me what you think, Ottawa. Would you consider giving up the first and the third in this year's draft to do that deal? Next, Anaheim. Anaheim, I like this for Anaheim because I know Anaheim is rebuilding and this new general manager has done some things that I think they've had to do for a while, trading Lindholm, trading Manson to really actually do a rebuild here. But I also know that Anaheim cannot afford to be a long rebuild. I just don't believe this team, the sponsors for this team are, are going to be overly patient with a long rebuild here. Um, their first this year, I think is like, take a look at it here. 22nd. They don't have one before the 22nd. No, 10th. Okay. They got the 10th, 10th overall pick. It's not a super strong draft. Um, if they don't get them, I think they'd be happy with the pick anyways. Right. But, uh, the pick at 10 probably isn't going to be ready for a couple of years. If Anaheim can use that pick in a third, which do they have their own? Oh, wait, do they have their own third? Actually, you know, this is one of the teams that didn't have their own third pick, so they can't do that. But what they could do is they could work out a deal before somebody signs and maybe say, look, we'll give you a first and a second right now. We'll give you the first and the second, so you get a second and our 10th right now and you take it and we'll sign him and you're like well what another team could offer sheep i suppose if they want to go like even higher 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 but anaheim has the cap space to sign him to even up to five million dollars they got a ton of cap space and they have an opportunity to move this uh, rebuild in a faster direction with a guy like Kaku who's been in the league already. He's already progressed. He's already ready to play right now. You know, they could even throw a Max Jones in there, really, on top of it if they really want to get bartering with an if another team comes in and also wants to get the ball rolling really well to get see if they can nab him before anybody offers shoots him. Possibility there. I, I like that for Anaheim. Good idea. Solid guy to have uh, get this rebuild rolling. Jacob Silverberg's getting up there. He can go, he can knock, you can knock him down to the third. Actually, a really good line. Just call him to a Lundestrom. I love Lundestrom. And you got Kako to play with Mason McTavish and this lineup shaping up. Shaping up. I don't mind it at all. Tell me what you think, Anaheim fans. Sub up to my channel. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about. Getting, giving up your first and your third this year to get a solid strapping winger like Kako. Next, New York Islanders. And 
the, I hummed and hawed before I ended up putting this one on here because they don't have much cap space, all right? Now you can go $10 million over the cap in the summer and then you gotta do something by the deadline, by the time the season starts, all right? They gotta sign Dobson. They'll probably have to give him a bridge, but it's gonna be probably a fairly healthy bridge. You know, if I'm them, I try to get them for four million up until free agency or something like that. I don't think he would settle for anything less than eight million on a long term. So let's say they go four million for three or something like that, somewhere around there. Noah Dobson's a beast. They don't want to tick him off. You got to give him something that is fair. He's a beast. He, he's done extremely well, and you piss him off, and he's just going, ah, I'm tired of you guys. I'm going to go to free agency. Take whatever I want. It's a balance that you got to do, right? When you're making a team, you got to make sure you're taking care of guys and balancing the cap and all that stuff like that. So that would leave about eight million to fill out the roster. But the good news is they don't have they don't have to much to fill out. It's going to be next year where they got to sign bars all and all those things and all that. That but you can deal with that. You know, you may you they were you may buy o Bailey or something like that, but if they could get a young Kako, because the Islanders are not rebuilding, but they still want to get younger legs. There's no doubt about it. I'm sure of it. This team wears down by the end of the season all the time. And who they have? They have their own first and third, so they could offer that 4.2 or 4.3. The thing is, though, if the Rangers think the Islanders are doing this, you can be sure as heck that they're going to be doing everything they can to trade them somewhere else. They're not going to want them to go to Long Island, for sure. Uh, but I, I could see the Islanders doing it. I don't know if I would do it if I'm them. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. They can trade. Uh, Semyon Varlamov is probably going to be traded, too. So they got the space to do it. And... The Islanders, to me, have always been a team that if they can get a player ready now, they will do it, rather than draft a draft, get a high draft pick and stuff like that. They they made it to the semifinals two years in a row. I'm sure Lamorello still thinks this team is good enough to win a cup. Uh, they have Sorok in there. They have an opportunity to get a good, good, good young guy. And they trade their first, which was like a bubble. So it's going to be a middle first this year, which isn't the deepest draft in their third. I could definitely see the Islanders just to piss off the Rangers on anyways, right? Tell me what you think, Islanders fans. If you like Kako for that. Um, next, and finally, and the team I think most likely to do this is the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars are a team that really, they, they're excellent at drafting. They're a fantastic drafting team. They have $19 million in cap space this year. They don't have anybody significant to sign, really, except for uh, Klingberg, which we'll see what happens there. I, I don't, Klingberg said he wanted to be traded. He wasn't happy with the offer, all of those sort of things like that. But anyways, even if they do sign him, they still got room. And guess what? They got their first and third round pick, and it's a late first and a late third. They still keep their second, and this is a team that forever believes that they're cup contenders. They're never not going to believe, and I think even more so when you saw what Jake Ottinger, the beast, did in the playoffs for the one round that they were in. I, I, I think even more so than ever, they think that they can win. But they certainly got older legs in here. Sagan's 30 and injured a lot. Uh, Jamie Ben 32 now. Pavelski, of course. I mean, the guy's a freak of nature at 37, what he does. Um, we got some younger guys like Ropo Hints, who Rope Hints is also Finnish. Yeah, so that would help. And you got a whole bunch of Finns down here. You could add to the to the Finnish community in Dallas. Hacking pa. Lindell and Heiskinen, 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 however you want to say it. I would be a great fit. It only costs them a first and third. They get younger right away. They get big. They love their big players here. Like 6'2", 6'3", 
Look at how big. They got a big team. And they just got younger, bigger, faster, everything. All in one shot for a first and a third. This is something I this is something Dallas would be all over, I'm sure. I think they're sitting in the weeds right now. You're not hearing about it. But I would think this would be the most likely team that Kako would go to if he were going to be moved. Uh, I think Dallas would be even willing to go higher if they had to, if they had to negotiate. They'd be willing to go higher than, than 4.2, 4.3. They'd be highly motivated to build with that core that they're building with uh, Ropo Hints, Robertson, Skin in all of those guys like that. Fits well finish wise. Tell me what you think, Dallas Stars fans and everybody else in the land. What do you think about where Kako should go? Should the Rangers sign him? Not sign him? Should they? Uh, you know, do you think they should take the first and third? Because if it was Dallas, they'd be pissed because it's a late first, right? It's a late first, but it's up to Kako. Capo Caco to sign. And if you're Caco, Dallas has been a playoff team for a while. You may be really excited about going to another playoff team with all those fins there too and everything. I think that's the most likely one for me. That's my full 42, boys and girls. Thank you for listening to this fine programming. Catch you again. There's a little Perla dance for you out. Have a great day. Sub yourself up. Okay, bye.